Hey everybody, Raziel here, coming back at you again with a Smite God build for the Xbox One, or any platform for that matter. It's been a couple weeks and I apologize for that. My PC decided to corrupt itself during an update, and because of that I've had to reinstall a lot of things, like Windows, or you know, my recording software, etc, etc. Uh, and I've had to rebuild some stuff, so if the audio and the webcam are kind of out of sync, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, that way I can tweak it as necessary. But that being said, again, I apologize for my PC pooping out, and let's get right back into it. This week we're going to be going over Arachne, the Weaver. Uh, she is a Greek assassin, and she is a friggin' beast. Uh, besides the fact that she's a spider, which is, you know, it's, oh, it's not an insect, it's an arachnid, etc., etc. Uh, that's a tangent for another day. So... This video is intended for those who are new to Arachne, have not used her in a while, or want to understand why she is melting your health bar whenever uh, you go against an Arachne. So, yes. If you like what you see, hit that thumbs up and or subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about this god. If you want to see any gods in the future that I have not gone over already, I do have a playlist. So... Excuse me, check that out before you make a suggestion, etc., etc. And before we get into the nitty gritty, we're going to go over the housekeeping that I always go over during every video, and that is for the abilities. Now, I play on the Xbox One and I use the Savage build. You may use a different controller layout than I do. You may be on the PS4, which has different buttons to begin with, and that, uh, you know, the PC and the Mac don't have a different UI altogether. But that being said, the abilities from here on forward will be called out as 1, 2, 3, and 4. The 1 being the one all the way to the left, the 4 being the ultimate, and the other 2 in between, etc, etc. So when I call these out, I'm calling 1, 2, 3, or 4. That should hopefully eliminate any confusion depending on what um, platform you're playing on. So now let's get going into this. This is where we're going to be going over her abilities, her relics, or item build, and then combos and uh, fighting scenarios, etc. Primarily for Conquest is what I'm going to be calling it out. But these builds could go for majority of the play modes, Clash, Arena, uh, even in Assault, depending. Uh, actually, Assault changes a little bit, but Siege and Joust. So let's get right into it. Let's go into her abilities here. Oops, I moved her. And we're going to start out with her passive, which is called Predator. Arachne's basic attacks gain a 1.5 physical damage for every 5% of the target's missing health. Not her health, but the target's health. So as you start to melt down your enemy or your target's health, she gets stronger and stronger. And when they're near death, you're just destroying them. So she gains an extra 1.5%. All right, so that's, that's essentially we're gonna say five percent. That's simple math. We can't do it. Every ten percent she gain, every ten percent of the enemy's health bar missing, she gains three percent physical power or damage. So at fifty percent, she has gained fifteen percent extra damage. That's pretty good. It's, so by the time you're almost at nine, you know ninety percent. I can't do that math right now, I'm friggin' tired. But you can get the point. It's more than 15. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like 20... 27%. That sounds about right. If I'm not, put it in the comments below. Let me know uh, why I can't do simple math. So, we're gonna move on to her one, which is called Venomous Bite. Upon activation, Arachne's next basic attack within 5 seconds does an additional damage and infects the target with venom, dealing damage over time and healing Arachne's every half second for 3 seconds. So you get 6, six ticks for a heal, and you get 6 ticks of damage on the enemy. Now Arachne here only has 2 abilities that go scaling upon her physical damage, or physical power. This is the 1, and her ultimate the 4. The other 2 do not. Unfortunate, but you know, you don't need to stack physical power. You can, but you don't need to because her other abilities come in handy and her build doesn't necessarily go for it. At least my build. It differs from the majority, but that's later on in the video. So, what this does is the initial damage at max ranks will be 150 damage plus an additional 35% of your physical power. 
initially, that first hit. And while not, you got to get that first hit within five seconds. It does 150 plus 35 percent. Okay, so that's pretty. That's, that's a decent. And then it does an additional 50 damage times three, so or six. So that's uh, three, 300 damage over the duration, plus another 10 percent per tick. So additionally, that's another 60 percent damage. So 360. Or 300 damage plus 60 damage over the life of this da this damage. Now the healing does 50 again, plus an additional 10% of your physical power. So you get healed 300 plus each time as well. It's not huge, but it, it, early game it's beneficial. Trust me, pretty pretty beneficial. This is this is your damage dealer. This is your healing. This this is a good good ability that uh, I usually start off with when I'm attacking. Well, I'll go over to that in a little bit. I'm a little rusty, so if it seems a little haphazard, I apologize, it's been a few weeks. Her two is Cocoon. Uh, this is huge, this is great. This is one of her, I mean, her her kit is pretty, pretty well-rounded. Arachne spindles her webbing. I don't know why I said it that way. Her next three successful basic attacks are executed with increased attack speed for six seconds. If all three attacks hit the same target, they're stunned. And they're actually wrapped up in a cocoon. So the attack speed at max ranked is increased by 70%. That's, that's, a, that's a huge amount. I mean, at this point, you're going to be close, probably. You know, depending on your build, you could be close to, to max rank. Or, or pretty good. The 70% could cap over, but doesn't matter because you're going to be hit so damn fast, people are not going to know what the hell hit them. And if you get them, and sometimes minions get in the way, but if you get them with those three basic attacks, and you stun them, it's game over. They might burn purification, or they might just accept the fact that you just destroyed them. Uh, it's, it's 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 amazing. I mean, I don't know why it took me so long to play this god. She is like one of my favorite right behind a Wheelix to play. I haven't played her in a while, but she's she's great. I got her, I got my 24 and 0 with the her, and that's another video you can find in my channel here. Her three is Web. Now this is one that's very distinctive, and you will recognize it right away when you see it. Arachne shoots a line of web forward. She is immune to slow and moves faster while on this web. If the web reaches max range, a web trap will spawn. And that's, you know, a wall of spider webs with a couple spiders on it. Enemy gods who walk through the trap or get hit by the projectile are slowed by 25%. Reveal to Arachne and leave a trail of web behind them and they're attacked by her broodlings. Arachne can only have two web traps active at a time. And the webs last for 240 seconds, which I think was, what, four minutes? That sounds about right. So, you shoot the web, she moves faster, enemy gets slowed, broodlings that help you attack, and it's it's just a great, it's a great for initiation, and it's great for a chase. Again, I'll go over that a little bit more at, towards the end of the video. The slow duration is six seconds at max rank. Her movement speed at all ranks is increased by 40%. You get two broodlings no matter what, that doesn't increase. And the damage increases to 60 per hit. And they can hit a fair amount. Early game, these can do a lot of damage to enemy gods. And it's great. It's great for clearing camps as well. And, and taking on you know enemy gods. And the wave. You know, it's, it's just a good ability. It's an annoying ability. It's an ability that makes her kind of more early game than late game. Depending on what you build. So she's she's well rounded pretty much. So far, so she's got she's got additional speed and a slow and this 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 uh, ability. She has a stun, and her two. She has a boost and a heal in her one. And then we get into her ultimate here, which is a freaking escape. I, w I wouldn't call it a leap per se. It is something else. Arachne flips up on her infinite web. Hanging upside down above the lane and increasing her movement speed, she may leap off the web at any time to deal damage to all enemies in a in a target area. It's a 20 to 20 unit radius. At max damage, this is 550. I mean, a max rank. It's 550 plus 100 percent of your physical power. That's not too bad. I mean, if you get say 200 physical power somehow by your build, so that's a, that's 750 damage. That's not that's a good chunk. You know, 
and her movement speed is increased by 40 percent and the duration is five seconds all ranks so the only thing that increases over the ranks is the damage done and the cooldown reduces now this I use mostly for escapes or the chase it's very good so and it also makes her immune so I mean if you don't want to pick up a certain item like purification or sanctuary you can use this and try to get the hell out of dodge out of the way etc or you can use this to do the chasing down and, and secure the kill so that's her that's her kit that's her abilities well-rounded you know you've got a heal you've got a stun you've got a slow and a speed and boost plus an attack speed boost in her one and you've got like a leap immunity channeling speed boost thing here in her ultimate kinda of well-rounded all around that's what makes that's what the hell all, all around well-rounded okay anyway I am fumbling with myself. Let's just keep going. Next, we're going to go into the relics. Like I said earlier, I really said that fast. This is going to be primarily for a conquest build. Can be used in clash, siege, joust, etc., etc. Everything is situational. These relics are no exception, and your item build, especially, could change depending on who you're going against, if you're getting you know destroyed early game, or if you guys are steamrolling. Uh, the enemy, if you're up by two, three levels, etc., etc., your item build could change. Your relics could change. So, let's get into relics. Now, she's a, ju she's a jungler for conquest, and more times than not, you're going to be going against a god in mid or jungle, or even, you know, the, uh, the support could rotate onto you as well. And they're going to have some kind of form of CC, an Ares, a Ymir, etc., a Susan, Susano, whatever, Erlong Sheng, whatever. You're probably going to want to start out with um, Purification English, buddy. You know, it gets you out of that crowd control effect and gets you out of harm's way. And I usually pop that into, the, into this uh, slot, which would be my X, because it's easier for my thumb to just slide off my right thumb stick and hit that X. Or whatever could potentially be that. And then for her second relic, I usually go... Well, you can go two things. If they have healers, you can go uh, this Weakening Curse. Uh, if you want to focus on making sure you're just doing some split pushing and get those towers down, you can go with Frenzy. Because it gives you, you know, attack speed bonus and additional bonus towards objectives like towers and uh, gold fears, etc. Or you could do sprint to do the chase down. Or if you really, you know, want to get into it, you can even do a med because a med is always great, especially in assault. You're going to do med first uh, because you know you're not going to really, s you're going to be mana hungry at least early on, and you know, mana is always great. That's the only reason why you go with a med. More times than not, you're going to go with Purification, maybe a Sanctuary if no one has crowd control, but they have like a Neath or a Vulcan or something like that where you could pop that. And, you know, Frenzy more often than not, because someone else will probably get a sprint, like uh, someone in dual lane or something like that. So Frenzy is usually my second item I pick up on an Assassin, just in general. Alright, so... Pop that down. We don't really need that showing. I don't know why it was. We're gonna go into her. Okay, her um her items. Now I build her a little different than most. Um, it's just how I how I play. You can go with it. I'm gonna try to suggest what people usually build, but my build will work as well. It works for me. I I do a lot of damage. Like I said, I went 24 and 0 in a clash. Granted, it was the clash, so it may not be as epic as if it was a conquest. But it was still 24 and freaking 0. And I did a lot, a lot of damage that game. So people here could go Ninja Tabby for the for the attack speed. She has attack speed in her kit and her one. So I prefer to go to Warrior Tabby for that extra physical power for an, or for early game damage on her one. So I go, oops, I go, sorry. If she, <laughs> you're gonna want to Bumba's Mask because you're jungling and it gives you that true damage and the heals, etc. After you go Bumba's Mask, you're gonna go towards Warrior Tabby. All right, like I said, it gives you that damage, gives the attack, uh, the movement speed, and it's, you know it's boots, staple. Everyone usually goes boots first, except for some hunters and some mana hungry like assassins, etc., etc. Your next item that I would go 
is you know your your staple core item of Jotun's Wrath because you get your physical power, get to the extra mana, you get cooldown reduction, which always helps, and you get penetration. Penetration is always good, especially when you're going against the more tanky warriors and obviously support class. Now, after that, this is where it differs. People can go uh, Fatalis, or they could go Kin Size. I prefer it's still early game. My speed boost from my um, my three, and my attack speed boost from my one, and my ability to stun them from my two makes me go towards kin size first because I just want that extra damage. It gives me attack speed and it gives me 4% of the target's health each time I attack. So I'm starting to get faster here. The next item after that, which you, you know, they, people can swap these two kin size or fatalis. Additional attack speed, a lot. Additional movement speed, which is great for the chase, but more importantly, it negates that attack movement speed debuff when when you hit with a basic attack. So it means you can dance around them and keep just, you know, hitting them like crazy. And, and that's a depiction right there, a dramatization of how she attacks because she attacks with her hands. It was poor. I apologize. Let's move on. Tell no one that happened. Nobody. So Fatalis would be in the next item we go. So... Now, people, again, here could go Stonecutter Sword. Here, you know, because it increases your your protections and decreases their protections, plus it gives you physical power and some more movement speed. I prefer to go into a lifesteal item. Yes, she has one in her kit, but you have to wait for the cooldown, and you're going to be doing a lot of damage. You're going to be attacking really fast. She's a fast attacker, so... I'm going to go Blood Forge. You could go Aussie here, but I'm going to go Blood Forge. Because she's going to do some pretty she's doing some pretty good uh attack speed with the Fatalis and the Kin size as it is. I mean, if we look now with those two, her attack speed is 1.85. Cap is 2.5. Plus, you know, once you get your your, your steroid and for attack speed and your and your one or your two, I can't remember which one. It's just ridiculous. Okay, so we're going to go Blood Forge because we want that 75 physical power and, and and the shield that you get when you get the kill. You could go Aussie here if you wanted that little bit extra penetration, that little bit extra attack speed. Now, if you haven't sold Bumba's Mask already, sell it. And you can, you're going to go into some crit. Now, there's... I was building this item here. Wind Demon, okay? Because it... Every time you create it, increases your attack speed and your movement speed by 20% for 5 seconds. That's pretty good. You're going to probably crit again within that 5 seconds. So you perpetually have attack speed and movement speed buff. Now this is what I was going. Some people could go uh, Deathbringer for the 50%, the extra crit damage. And a lot of people are putting in this new or new-ish crit item, Poison Star. Which is like the opposite <clears throat> excuse me, the opposite of the Wind Demon in that it doesn't increase anything to you, but it debuffs the enemy that you're attacking. So critical hits, critical hits on enemy gods affects them with a poison for two seconds. And it slows them by 20% and reduces their damage output by 20%. Okay, so you can go with either of these. You could go for the slows and the damage reduction, or you could go for the Wind Demon. Now the Wind Demon, I think, procs on minions as well. So if you create a minion, you'll get that proc. Now, now the whatever the hell is it was called here, Poison Star, only procs on gods. So that's that's a negative effect. But if you if it's late game, you guys are getting pooped on. You got someone who's just dealing some damage. You can go for this item, reduce their output by twenty percent, slow them down, and it could be beneficial. Or you could go Wind Demon for the chase. Or you could just want to say, I'm going to crit like crazy and go with Deathbringer. Really, any crit item will work. But I think the main, th the main three, Deathbringer for a lot more, for extra crit chances. Wind Demon or Poison Star. And you, people have been putting Poison Star earlier in the build as well. Maybe in between Jotuns and Kins, etc, etc. 
totally up to you. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Wind Demon because it procs on minions as well, and it lasts for five seconds as opposed to two. If you don't want, if you don't want to put Blood Forge in, you could go with Poison Star, or you could go with Deathbringer. I did that in an Apollo build. Uh, I was just playing around. I went both Wind Demon and Poison Star, and it was great because I slowed him down and I sped myself up. And I was able to just chase him down while pew pewing. These last, you know, there's the crit items. The last couple items are completely up to you. Again, situational. Uh, you might take out Jotun's Wrath for uh, Brawler's Beat Stick if they have a healer. Uh, I mean, you could even potentially put a. Um, <coughs> Frostbound Hammer if you want some additional slows, etc. This item build will work. Once you figure out how your playstyle wants to be, if you want to do more crits, not so worried about healing yourself, you can take the Blood Forge out and put another crit item in there. If you think your movement's pretty good, you can take Fatalis out and put an, you know, another item in there. You can put Titan's Bane in there. Some people put Titan's Bane. Some people put Stonecutter Sword. Again, the core would be Boots, Jotuns, Kins, and then after that, you guys can decide. You want? I usually go attack speed, attack speed, attack speed, because with that Kins, it'll be it'll just be that much quicker, and you'll melt them melt them down even quicker. And then with the health, you know, with the uh, life steal from the Blood Forge, it sustains yourself as well. So this, like I said, this build should work. Try it out, make adjustments as you see fit, either for situational or for your pace style. It will get you kills. In conjunction with the next part of the video, which is combos, fighting scenarios, let's get to it. Alright, so now as you can see, she moves around, pretty good, kind of creepy if you don't like spiders. And you know, obviously she's an assassin, she has to be kind of quick. Now I'm doing a pretty good amount of crits right here. You know, so she's hitting for 291, and granted that's a level 1, Odin, etc. But she's critting for 582, so she's doing some crit. Actually, can I see the... And you can see right there, you know, the buff keep, cups keeps refreshing down there. The Wind Demon, every time I crit, goes to four seconds. We know I said five, but, you know, uh, it can starts immediately less than five as soon as you do it. And your Fatal, you know, if you notice, I'm kind of slow here. And then when I get close for the Fatalis, I don't get that debuff. And you can see the, the, the buff uh, to the lower left there of my health bar. So... This is how you play Arachne. You, 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 you use her three to initiate. I usually pop my one, then my two, and then just melt faces while dancing around the enemy, confusing them with Fatalis. If they try to run, you've probably crit at some point, and you can chase them down with Wind Demon. And if they really get far, you can alt on their ass. So first I'm going to show you... There's, there's her one. And you can see I'm getting healed. And it did some, did some pro, uh, damage as well. And actually, I'll just hit them once. And you can see those, those orange numbers there. That's the proc. That's the uh, damage proc that we talked about. Now, we're going to just go over her two. Gotcha. See? Boom. Stunned. In a cocoon. And then we're going to go over her three here. Which is the spiders, and look, the broodlings attacking. Now, actually, I don't know if they despawn. This will be a good way to find out, because Odin won't attack back. So, yeah, okay, they do eventually. <laughs> Usually, minions or enemy gods will kill them. I think I might have to move my uh, my webcam too, because you can't really see my target in that that camera angle. So Odin here, you know, likes to take a beat, and we're gonna go through the, the combos here. I like he's, she's a she's a she's an assassin. And I like to hide. I'll, I'll I'll peek around corners so they can't see me, or I'll, I'll coordinate with my team members if I'm in a party and say where are they at, where are they at. Can I see them? Can I see them? You know, kind of not be visible, but you can kind of see them, kind of thing. And as soon as they're not looking, I'll pop my three. <laughs> Proc my one, hit my two, boom, and then just dance around them like that. And they're like, what the hell's going on? And they're dead. They're dead. And you can chase down you can chase down the enemy. Boom, boom, boom. And that's pretty much it. You know? You hit your three. 
Procky one, Procky two, bomb, 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 dance around, dance around. At this point, they're either dead, about to die, running away, uh, and then maybe you got the shield from Blood Forge, or their friends showed up, and you and you just get the hell out of dodge. Additionally, you're getting beat on. You're getting beat on. You can use your three to get out of there. You know, and run through it, because if they run through it, then the spiders will slow them down a little bit too, and the web will slow them down. I'm just gonna show you. Uh, her alt here. Actually, I'll I'll, I'll use my. Oh. Ra's gonna freaking blind me, so it's not gonna really work. I hate that they freaking use Ra because when you're trying to show your kit and he uses his freaking blind, you, you can't show. So anyway, I'll use her um, her alt here, and I'll just jump. See, whoop! I'm flipped up. You see the radius. You can move that and then jump down and boom boom. And then proc. And then oh spiders and then boom boom. And just just melt. I mean it's 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 pretty simple actually. And again, I'm surprised it took me that long to figure out how to play the god. Three, one, two. Or three, two, one. It's up to you. I usually proc the one for the get the heal going, then the stun, then melt. Or if they're usually elusive, get that stun in, then proc the one, and done. I mean, just you're pretty much hitting those three as soon as you can. Spiders will slow them down. Stun will just secure it and hit the one. If you if and if you're really good, you can throw out your spiders, proc your one, do some damage to them, and as they're starting to try, they're like, "Oh, okay, I can't handle this freaking arachne." kind of backpedal run away, you proc your two, you hit them one, two, three, you stun them, and they're, and they're done. Chase them down with the alt, or whatever, your teammates will clean it up, give you, give you an assist instead of the kill, those sons of bitches. Now, the order you want to level, or I level her abilities, is three first. Get those spiders as damage heavy as you can. You know, they're going to help you clear camps, they're going to help you clear waves, and they're going to help you secure the kills against enemy gods when you're ganking. After that, you hit your 1, and then your 2, whenever you can, because your 1 scales with your power, and it also increases that healing that you'll do to yourself. It'll keep you sustained until you get a lifesteal item. And then, whenever you can, hit, hit up your 2. And then when your when you're alt props up, you can throw it towards it if you want. If you're using it for initiation, hit the alt every time it pops up. If not, save that and go for your one, or go for your three, or your one. The items that you're really going to go to. Because if you're just using your alt mostly for escapes, which I usually do. I usually get in there, freaking burn my abilities, and if, if they focus me, I alt the hell out of dodge and refresh. You know. By the time I get back, all everything's up, and I just melt those karate chops. I'm very animated today. Anyway, I hope this helps. For anyone new, need a refresher, etc., etc., I appreciate you guys sticking around, and we're going to be back right into this. Um, so, as you can tell, hit me up in the links, uh, my Twitter. Uh, I usually post when I'm going live. Actually, I don't really stream on Twitch that much anymore, so... Uh, when I'm uh, posting a video, what I'm th feeling, etc., etc., and hit me, you know, subscribe to the channel, hit a thumbs up, leave a comment below. This has been a very haphazard uh, coming back, and I apologize if it was confusing, but I really missed, <laughs> I really missed doing these videos. I hope this helped, and I will see you guys in the next one. I'm out.